Hey guys, I thought I'm going to give you a quick update about Iceland because I have seen reports from some people. They're like, oh, the eruption's coming. The land rise is slowing down. It's going on. Um, we have to look into this bad because I think we should be careful with this and I will explain to you why. Um, one thing that is for sure, it has been a little bit quiet the last few days overall in Iceland with the earthquake activity, but that has changed yesterday and the change continues into today. So what is happening and in light of some new data, how could this be connected? So there have been noticeably fewer earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula last week, um, but the earthquake activity has started to increase a little bit yesterday. And there were also some weaker tremors right at the Sutnuka Crater series, but the seismometers have recorded like around five earthquakes there yesterday. And in total, on the whole Reykjanes Peninsula, there were 57 earthquakes. So you wouldn't say that there is any huge earthquakes from or anything going on. In the whole of Iceland, 127 earthquakes. If you see that, I mean, 57 of that was on the Reykjanes Peninsula. But we had 31 earthquakes in the Vatnajökull area. There's volcanoes as well that can do a lot of harm. But it's been rumbling there also on a regular basis the last month. But we have seen earthquakes, particularly in the Askja crater area and at Herubreit. So of course this needs to be closely monitored, but also it doesn't look like something's going to explode there in the very near future. Um, also the charts have shown that the land rise underneath the Swartzengi area where we have the geothermal power plant, the Blue Lagoon and the magma chamber underneath that is causing all these eruptions and intrusions that have started about a year ago. So there it seems this magma chamber is filling up. It's still filling up, but it's apparently rising a little bit more slowly and is it? So we will have a look at the latest release from the Icelandic Metrological Office because, and that's why many people are on alert, um, if there is an increase in earthquakes and the land rise is slowing down, that could be an indication that the magma chamber has reached the point of maximum elasticity. So it's imagine you're blowing up an air balloon, right? A, a party balloon. So it, it's rising, 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 rising. But when it stops, that means if you now put more air in, it's about to blow. So before it's going to blow, it slows down. And that's why this is so important to watch that land rise. But we're nowhere near like an, an earthquake swarm that could indicate an impending eruption. If there's an impending er eruption and uh, magma is flowing into the Sudnuka crater series, no, that would look totally different. But, you know, you always have to watch it. Something could be moving there. So um, they think that the slight increase in, in activity is basically because there is a lot of magma in that magma chamber again. And that land rise is, of course, putting stress on the caprock layer and, and the, to the surrounding areas. And we have heard from Benedict Gunnar of Feixon, he's a deformation specialist at the Icelandic Metrological Office. And he has said, well, guys, we have almost 23 million cubic meters and probably even more by now of magma in that magma chamber again. And that was the amount that the magma chamber had last time when it produced the last eruption. What we've learned from these eruptions to trigger the next eruption, we probably always need more magma than in the last eruption in the magma chamber in order to trigger the next eruption. Basically, what Gunnar of Feixen has said, yeah, we could see an eruption in the next two weeks. That would still be November, but he says, the earthquake activity doesn't give us any indication and it's usually a precursor to something like this and it has only increased slightly so far. So nothing, nothing really that says be on high alert. So therefore he believes that 
an eruption in the next two weeks, so meaning in November is rather unlikely unless really the seismic activity is increasing significantly. That is changing the odds again um, because that would really be another trigger point and show us that the, the pressure in the magma chamber underground is really, really high now. But he thinks that we might see an eruption rather around Christmas, which is not really great, right? It's not really a great timing, but we will have to wait and see. But let's have a look at the new data. And that was the reason why I thought I'll, I'll make this video to explain that. Basically, look at these graphs and then I'll explain them. And at the the orange yellow vertical rectangle. So what this graph graphic shows you, um, and they're showing you another measuring station so that you could compare it with what's going on at Swartzengi. And that is important because if you only look at Swartzengi, the data has shown that the land rise has slowed down, which would be a point of a little bit higher alert level because it always does this before the next eruption. But that's why they have shown the other graph with the other measuring stations and that's the interesting thing that's that's at Herdi Sarvik Herdi Zarvik I don't know how to pronounce that but it doesn't matter it's another measuring station in another area and they have also recorded basically a downturn trend and that is a little bit strange and that's why I want you to look at this so yeah, they're also confirming the, the seismic activity in the crater area, in the Sutnuka crater area, where we see all these eruptions is rather low, and uh, but that there are still several earthquakes every day, and they're mostly located between Stora, Skogfell, and Silingerfell. So that's the area where they also think we could see something new in the coming weeks. Um, and here it comes, they're pointing out to the weather. So there was bad weather for some days last week and this has affected the sensitivity of the measuring instruments of the seismic system. So they also say the smaller, the micro seismic tremors might not even have been recorded because of wind, snow, rain, whatever that bad weather was. And then their GPS monitors have shown this evidence that you see in the right rectangle bar that the land rise has slowed down in the recent days. So that's on the right side. It looks pretty obvious, but they say it's too early to say right now that these changes are a sign that the magma inflow in that magma chamber is slowing down. And why is that? Because you can see similar changes in other places on the GPS network that they're using in Iceland, other places that are away from Swartzengi, so that are not impacted from what's going on underneath Swartzengi. So because of that, and because on the left side of this graphic, they also see this phenomenon, this, this basically subsidence. They are saying they cannot rule out external influences on their measuring data. For example, space weather or changes in the orbits of satellites because they're using satellites to measure these land subsidences or land rises. They say they have to wait until next week to really get a clearer picture if there are any changes in the deformation of that land rise underneath Swartzengi. Um, and whether the magma accumulation has indeed slowed down as it looks here on that graph. So they need the new data and then compare it with the deformation that has been measured on the GPS network right now. And here, if you look at the Hadi Zavik measurements, that is really, that's what's unusual because during that period, in that time period that is within these orange rectangles, the changes in deformation can be seen in Swartzengi, but also in Hadi Zavik. And, and that is considered unusual in that area. Why would that be 
there. And they're saying many things can cause small systematic variations that are not due to geostationary changes in the area. So problems in reference system, satellite orbits, or solar activity, which they call space weather. Um, the risk assessment therefore remains unchanged. We still have basically the Grindavik area, the Schwarzenegger area, and zone seven in yellow, so that's a lower risk area, and then an elevated risk in the orange area because there, that's where we had the last eruption and that's where they think we will see the next eruption. So no reason to be on high alert. Um, I don't think anything is going to happen as of right now, but that can change in a heartbeat if we see these clustered earthquake swarms right at the Sudnuka crater area or away from Swartzengi towards that direction. If we really see a cluster of a lot of earthquakes so that these dots, you can't even identify single dots, that they really form one big, big cluster, then it's time to be alerted for now. It seems to be okay. We have to wait for the new signal. So that was my update, guys. Check out my other videos. Interesting stuff. Thanks for your support. If you want to support the channel, check the links in the description. Become a member of the channel or go to my buymeacoffee.com website. And also, of course, thanks for your supers that you're sending the channel here. So stay safe. Be prepared. I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.